Welcome to Azure Databricks. In previous video, we created a cluster. In this video, we will create a job or workflow. Job is just like a program or a process in your workspace inside a Databricks, which would be used to achieve a particular goal. Goal means, suppose you have data somewhere then you can extract the data and you can transform this data in a particular format and can upload or utilize this data in your system and further this data would be used by different different system or anywhere wherever you want in short we are doing ETL extract transform and load so in the definition a job is a way to run non-interactive code in an Azure Databricks cluster. So definitely we will use the cluster. Without cluster, we cannot run any job. And inside a job, we will we will perform the extract, transform, and load operations. Once we create the job, we will execute this job in the UI, or we can run the job in the CLI, or we can invoke the job using the API as well. And we will see how we can monitor the job result. So let's begin. Let's create a job. This is the environment where we have workspace. So that is the Databricks workspace. You may have the question, what is the Databricks workspace? Databricks workspace is an environment for accessing all of your Databricks assets, like your objects notebook libraries and some folders you can see some folders here and clusters and jobs so all this environment you can see so that is entirely entirely we called it workspace so here you can see the different folders so I have added two files here if it is two files retrieve by retrieve web name and filter web names so if I click on this one so it's just a Python program if you are coming from the data science background definitely you are aware about this programs like we have the Python notebook and in the Python notebook we have Python program it's just simply extracting the data from this URL and and we are putting this data into the CSV file and if you see the second program filter by business name now here I am just passing the parameter here 2014 and based on this parameter it's just fetching the data and will displaying the data so if I run the program it will fetch the data so for this parameter it's just fetching the data into it's just fetching the data and you can see the result over here you can run this program from here but we will create a job that would be used to execute this python program now see we have these two python programs you can i just want to tell you how you can add python notebook here right click create notebook and you can give the name and you need to select the languages so for now you can see four languages are there python sql scala and r so these four languages are the part of this databricks workspace so currently you can see supporting programming languages are python scala spark spark and r now let's create the job here click on workflows in the workflows you will see a window workflows jobs create on create job it will ask you to put the details of the job here you can edit the name and you need to put the task inside the job you are creating the multiple task so in the first task what we will do what we will do in the first task select the type notebook source workspace okay I'm trying to giving the retrieve web name but it will say only alpha numerics 
uh, okay so I, I need to put the character only and path so path is the so inside the so in the path section you need to browse the notebook here you need to select the retrieve baby's name that is the first task name is the retrieve baby's name and I can create and the important thing cluster we just cluster you need to select you need to select the cluster in the previous video we created a cluster you can see in the suggestions I created a cluster in the previous video and now click on create <coughs> once you click on create it will show the job details at right side it will show the job details <coughs> and that is the first task you can create multiple tasks so here is the plus icon click on the plus icon here I am creating the another task task name is filter baby's name and I need to select the path inside the path I will select python file filter baby's name select this one and click on confirm ok create task here now click on create task so that is the next task so similarly you can see multiple tasks you can create inside a job like in first task I am just reading the excel from the url or from the file provider you can see and suppose you are working in the organization so, so you may have the file providers and you need you, and you need to read the files from different different feed providers ok so we have the two tasks now I can click on run now once I click on this one you can see view run in the view run I can see this window ok that, that is completed and if I click on this one it will show the executed task so both tasks are completed there is no any error sometime you may get some errors but yeah that is very simple program so it's just reading the data and showing the data so if I click on the filter baby's name as here we just reading the data but in the filter baby's name you can see this is the result for this parameter you can see this is the table that's very easily we have created a job I hope your concept is clear what is the job inside the workspace I just simply created a job and show the result if you want to run the job um, you can run you can click on job with different parameters so so here you can see run now with different parameters so if you click on this one you can pass the key we have the parameter here you can pass the different values and if I put the value this time 2015 and I click on run it will start running once this done you can see the result over here again this is the result for 2015 all the rows belongs to 2015 only so currently this is the program but default value is 2014 but you can see as manually we pass the parameter so that is the result this is the job just created but additionally you want to do some more things we have some more features in the job you you can utilize as per your requirement you can see edit timeout if I click on edit timeout you can see edit timeout so if I click on edit timeout here you can see the timeout in seconds apart, apart from that you have schedule if you have to schedule this job on a particular time or particular day you can schedule it here you can see schedule type is manual or scheduled so if you click on schedule you can set the date you can set the frequency on which date and what time the date the job should run and you can save the changes 
if you know the cron syntax click on here here i can put the cron syntax you need to just understand what is the cron syntax that then you can schedule it and next one is the notification if i click on notification uh, yeah so here you can determine the action on the success or end on failure and on the start once the job failed on which once the job failed i want to notify to a particular group i can put the email id or over here and i can do multiple action if i click on head again you can see one more row and i can select the start success and failure every time i will send the email and for failure i can send email to a particular group or particular email id and i can click on confirm and one more thing here apart from that maximum concurrent runs default is one but sometime you want this job should run two times three times so here you can see here you can set the maximum concurrent runs now that is a thing i have covered i think i have covered so many things uh, one more thing is git you may have some references you can put into the git repository you can browse and put the references here and you can click on save that is the overall thing i have explained to you I, one more thing i want to tell you inside the compute go to the compute and suppose uh, by the chance you are just you are just doing the practice in this case you need to see the things like your cluster is running you can stop it are you sure want to terminate cluster quota coaching cluster confirm then it will takes few seconds and will be stopped i hope you enjoyed the video that's all in this video i will come with a new video which definitely will help you to know databricks in more details for now happy learning